All right, so I think what I'm going to do is put more in the description uh, about Red Hawk than in the video itself, uh, and then make this maybe a couple, part one, part two or so, because uh, there's a lot to like go over and dig into on this Red Hawk. I'm not even to the point where I fully understand it all. It's been around for a while. I hadn't used it before. Um, I saw there was a recent release and it got me looking at it again because I thought it was pretty interesting that you could have a GNU radio like interface and have that also running on in some cases the SDRs themselves like with uh, uh, I think the Edis uh, uh, what's it called the E310 I thought was uh, pretty interesting uh, but even if I can't run it on an SDR maybe having another um, instance of Dragon OS and have a uh, SDR uh, like a B210 or an RTL SDR connected and be able to ta or assign tuners and, and tasks I guess you would say to those SDRs uh, remotely I, I thought was pretty interesting and so I've got the page up here you can read the description about it being a framework designed to support the development deployment and management of real-time software radio applications so through this setup I found it was was a little uh, difficult to get up and running maybe just because the directions didn't seem complete so I'll, I'll go slow and if there's any mistakes made I will I guess we'll correct them real time here because I'm trying to honestly remember uh, doing this from scratch okay so I have a uh, this is actually an inst uh, an install of Dragon OS, and then within Dragon OS, I have uh, VirtualBox running with another instance of Dragon OS, so I can start fresh and just refer back to what I know uh, works. So what you're looking at now is the fresh install of Dragon OS, uh, and what I did was instead of using the um, the Docker, and it probably is fine, the Docker that comes, it's an older Docker that comes with 22.04. Uh, but uh, I chose to um, go to the docker.com page and uh, you can see here engine install Ubuntu came down to the 22.04 section and uh, just started with step 2 and the curl uh, command here uh, let's see and step number 3 here to update uh, my repository here do a app get update and then the very next uh, setup as far as install docker engine container and uh, docker compose should be fine uh, with that and we'll, we'll try from this point here to see if that is all we need And what I actually did was is there's two repositories. One seems to have newer updates than the other, but I noticed that uh, there's some scripts that are available in, in the other repo that uh, I will I think I will use in maybe part two of the video. So we should be able to start with this Compose Red Hawk. And I'm going to copy, uh, copy and use HTTPS to git clone this down. So Docker should be finished, and let me think. I guess what we could do is uh, just make a directory. Red Hawk is fine. Um, get clone that repository, and then what was not immediate uh, evident to me was uh, needing to edit. Let me think. We'll go into the Compose Red Hawk, and we're going to edit hidden file, this dot, uh, env. And let me see here. So we can see the version is going to be 2.2.5. Uh, 2.2.10 was released, but I don't know if there is, if that is in the repository. That would be interesting. I think. I think we'll just stick with uh, 5 as I know that works. And if we look on here, it kind of guides you, guides you through. And um, 
let's see so you set up this docker volume now if any of this is going to take uh, a little while here I will um, I'll cut it out and then come back because it might take a little while to download and and set this up so all right so I'm back that initial part is complete and then what I'm going to do is uh, look at the IP address here uh, let's see dot uh, 118 and so I'm going to remember that I'm going to go back in to the dot env file that's hidden and I'm going to add maybe a variable here uh, let me look I'll look back at my other system and it's actually hostname equals so hostname equals 10.185.1.118 I think is what we said yep so with that in there that is going to set up the Omni server uh, using that IP address so we've got our initial part done and we'll do sudo docker Maybe. Let me think. Mm. All right, so we might have needed Docker uh, Compose too, although I thought the newer newer uh, implementation uh, I'll double check that but I know that uh, docker compose will do up and we'll detach that this should start uh, after it pulls what's needed here this shouldn't take as long All right, so we have our Omni server domain and one GPP up. And again, I'll try and explain this more in the in the description. This is more about just getting it going. Now, something uh, that I'm going to have to get over here is this a function here, and let's see. if I could just paste this but I don't think that's gonna work yeah no okay so let's see we're gonna make some changes here I just realized I missed a uh, important step here so let's do sudo docker compose down and so that dot env file uh, that we set up I actually need to source that source dot env and we'll take and start our docker compose back up then let's try and see what we're missing here, which that might have been it. Uh, and you'll see that by starting the script, at least in my case, starting the script um, using the, the .sh um, didn't work. I think even after making the changes that I just did, you saw like when I manually uh, put it in. And so, so far, you know, we've got to the point where we have the IDE running. We have our domain and everything kind of 
running that we need behind the scenes. Uh, so, so far so good. And let's see if we can connect uh, to our actual domain. So we have the sandbox, but let's go ahead and see if we can connect to that Red Hawk underscore dev is what the default I be, uh, believe is. You can look back at the source.env file. Um, and so we've got a connection there. Uh, can't really do much yet. I mean, you can, uh, there's a few videos out there on using the sandbox and the chalkboard to set up a, like a flow chart of sorts. But let me grab, so what we'll do in this video, uh, I'll keep it uh, relatively, I know it said it would probably be longer, but we're making pretty good progress here. Uh, I'll take and plug in an RTL SDR locally to this uh, computer here. And so what, uh, let me think. So what we'll do is, all right, so um, I take that back. I, I have the SDR plugged in uh, locally, but I probably don't have VirtualBox all the way set up uh, or something. I'm not getting the, the RTL SDR uh, passed through. So what I'll do is, I'll just go ahead and try this out. So uh, let me think. So I'm going to go back to the main machine. And on the main machine, I've ba I have completed basically the same steps that I just demonstrated in the virtual machine. And I'm in that Compose Red Hawk folder. And I want to take a look at this add RTL SDR. So it's going to use the domain name, host name, which is going to be the IP. And okay. So what I'm going to try and do here is edit that env file. And I'll change the host name to 118. And so what I'm hoping, oh, and this should be 5. Red Hawk Dev, yep. Compose project name, that's fine. So what I'm hoping here is that if I source this env file and I run this add RTL SDR, I should, I believe, get a connection to the virtual machine, which is another machine, and I should get the RTL SDR popping up in the Red Hawk IDE that you see in the background, I hope, fingers crossed. So we'll start this up. I'll minimize this, and let's see what we got under device managers. So there we go, there is our RTL SDR that we can now control from our IDE, which is another machine on the network. And we should find that there is an available tuner, which is unallocated at the moment. And I can allocate this and let's just see, RTL dash for the, for the win, whatever you want to put there center frequency um, let's see let's put uh, 96 megahertz bandwidth I'm gonna I'll just do two and two two mega samples per second control new tuner I'm just keeping it simple just to show that we can um, allocate this tuner and use it and I'll come back and hopefully get more in depth on this so, uh, AGC is currently, let's see, hmm. well, I'll go with the automatic gain control on. a radio station here uh, but really to go beyond this I'm going to do a little more um, homework and figure this out but uh, it does seem like this would be uh, pretty useful to have multiple software defined radios out there able to be 
uh, controlled and interacted with using this Red Hawk IDE. So um, I'll try and get uh, a little better understanding of this and come back with um, more uh, a better setup, I guess. So, all right. Well, thanks for hanging with me, and uh, hope you find this interesting.